Hello learners, welcome to Sound Studying Addict Networking Group. Today we'll be looking at um, business studies. Business studies. My name is Mr. Adesoni. Uh, in the past, we've looked at various topics in business studies, and one of such topic is introduction to bookkeeping. Introduction. To bookkeeping uh, I will advise you to watch uh, the video on that if you have not uh, in that video we talked about uh, what transaction is and types of transactions we looked at what transaction is and we also look at the type of transactions uh, from that topic we looked at um, the next video I did was uh, on source documents on source documents now these topics are linked together Without a good understanding of the first two topics, it will be very difficult for you to uh, get this new topic. So what is the topic we'll be looking at today? Double entry. Double entry. So we'll be looking at what double entry is. Uh, double entry is one of the words used in bookkeeping. In bookkeeping. If you remember under the video that I did on bookkeeping, I told you then that bookkeeping is an act of recording business transactions in an orderly manner. Bookkeeping is an act of recording business transactions in an orderly manner. And I also try to explain what transaction is. That transaction uh, occur when a business or a person buy and sells goods and services. Uh, in that the same video, we... Uh, looked at um, types of transaction where I talked about cash transactions and uh, credit transactions. Cash transactions are transactions or the buying and selling you you make and pay cash immediately. While your credit transactions are transactions uh, you you make, but with the promise of paying later. Now, with the understanding of this, we'll give you a good understanding of. Uh, uh, double entering is as we we go on so uh, the question is this what is a double entering system as the name implied double entry now if you notice when I was also introducing you to journal I told you that information moves document to your journal and then from your journal to your ledger and then from your ledger to your final accounts uh, double entering principle or double entering system is one of the system of recording now it goes with uh, your concept your dual concept when I was uh, explaining the common practice the common uh, bookkeeping practice uh, when I was I did a video on that as well you can watch that so one of such concept is the dual concept the dual concept so your, your uh, double entering system works with the dual concept so go, you can go back to that video and look at the meaning of the dual concept. What the dual concept is talking about is this. As the name implies, dual or double. Every transaction must be recorded twice. It's a law, it's a principle uh, in accounting, in bookkeeping. Every transaction, be it sales uh, a transaction, uh, be it a, a purchase transaction, or be it your cash transaction or your credit transaction, uh, it must be recorded twice in your books of account. It must be recorded twice. So, quickly, let's look at the meaning of uh, uh, double entry. Now, it is a principle that states that for every debit entry, there must be a corresponding credit entry. And for every credit entry, there must be a debit entry meaning for every uh, entry you make into your books of account they must be recorded twice one in in the debit side of one one account and one in the credit side of other accounts so that's a principle it is called the dual concept and it is called the double entering principle in in the accounting and that is what we'll be discussing today that's what we'll be discussing today so take note of this again Take note of that. The double entering accounting principle. Each transaction must affect two or more accounts. 
to keep the basic accounting equation in balance. So recording is done by debiting at least one account and crediting the other. So the debit side must be equal to the credit side. It must. That's one of the rules in um, bookkeeping, in accounting. The debit side must be equal. I'll repeat that again. The debit side must be equal to the credit side. If there are aspiration, it shows that there's something wrong with your account. Because in accounting, we believe that your account must balance. If your account does not balance, it might be as a result of error or as a result of a um, fraudulent activity. And that is why your account must balance. Your account must balance. So this principle operates on the basis that every financial transaction must have two aspects, meaning every transaction, whether your cash transaction or your credit transaction must be recorded twice. I've said that before. First, it must be recorded on the debit side, which is the left side of your ledger. I'll be introduced to ledger very soon. So it must be first be recorded on of your ledger which is the debit side of one account and then on the credit side which is the right side of the other account so take note of that the debit side of one account and the credit side of another account meaning every transaction be it cash transaction or credit transaction must have two uh entries must have two entries be it cash transaction or credit transaction now let's look at uh, this diagram look at that the double entry system must be recorded twice debit which means receive credit which means give and if you see the down of this uh same value at all times meaning uh the same value must be recorded at all times it is called, called the double entering principle it is called the double entering principle now let's look at it in the broader uh, sense let's look at it in a broader sense now this how just like uh, your your ledger your ledger is a t-shape it's a t-shape where you have the debit side in the left hand side and the credit side in the right hand side so take note of that your ledger is a t-shape we have the debit side on the left hand side and the credit side on the right hand side so debit are placed on the left hand side of the le of the ledger and uh, credits are pl credits are placed on the right hand side of the ledger account which i said is in a t shape which i said is in a t-shape so i know the question that you'll be asking is this what is ledger because i've not introduced you to ledger i've introduced you to source document i've introduced you to journals you should remember that your journals are your day books where we talk about uh, your sales day book your credit your uh, sales day book your purchase day book return inward books return outward books uh, uh we call these uh uh, these books are accounts where your credit transactions are, are recorded. And I told you that information moves from your source documents, which are your receipts, your invoice, your debit notes, your credit note. Those are your source documents. So information moves from your source documents to your journals. And then from your journals to ledger. So the question is this. What are ledgers? Uh, which we have seen already. Uh, ledgers implies uh, can be defined as a book which contains in a, a classified and summarized form a permanent record of all transactions so all transactions are recorded permanently in ledgers so as information moved from your source document to your journal the final destination of this uh, uh, information or this transaction are your ledgers so the ledger is used for the double entering uh, bookkeeping system. So the, uh, where you are going to apply the principle of double entering is in your ledger, is in your ledger. Meaning uh, whatever you, any transaction you record uh, on the debit side must also be recorded on the credit side of another account. 
So take note of that. The information moves from the source document to your journals, from your journals to your ledger. And I told you that ledger uh, is a classified and a summarized form of uh, account, which is the final resting place of all our financial transactions. So take note of that. So we will be seeing more of uh, uh, ledgers, though I will be doing another video on, on ledger soon. So you will have a better understanding of what uh, ledgers are. So that will take us to the golden rule, which what I've been seeing since is the rule of a double entering principle. It is called the golden rule of double entering principle. And what is this rule? Debit the receiver. So when an organization is receiving money, when an organization is receiving money, uh, the account will be debited. When an organization is receiving money, that transaction will be debited will be recorded on the debit side of the person receiving it. Why the person giving the money, uh, the account, the transaction will be recorded on the credit side of such account. So it is debit the receiver, credit the giver. It's a golden rule. It's a standing rule in accounting, in bookkeeping. Debit the receiver, credit the giver. Let me give an example. Uh, uh, a good example is this. Uh, for, for example, I have a company, and the name of my company is Adesomi Company. And um, I bought, uh, I paid rent. Let me say I paid rent for my shop, and I want to record that in my account. Now, two accounts are involved there. As I've said, two accounts are involved. One is the cash account, my own cash account, and the rent account. These are the two accounts because I am paying rent. So one account is giving out money, and the account is collecting money. So you agree with me uh, that uh, the cash account is the one giving out money, while the rent account is the one receiving the money. So the cash account now is giving out money, is the giver, because the money is leaving my cash account, it will be recorded on the credit side of that cash account. Why? Because the rent account is collecting money, now. I am paying rent, it's, it's receiving the money. That transaction will be recorded on the debit side of my right account. So that's just an example. I'll be giving you more examples as, um, as we go on. So each time you have to record a transaction, ask yourself some questions. Which two accounts are involved? So if you see um, a transaction, just like what I've uh, just uh, mentioned now, a transaction, the question you need to ask yourself is this. Um, um, there are always two accounts involved. So you must be able to identify the two accounts that are involved there. Another example I can give is this. Bought motor van. Bought motor van for 2,000 Naira in cash. So you agree with me that there are two accounts there. Cash and motor van account. Motor van account can also be asset account. Okay? So these are the two accounts involved. So you have to now find out who is giving the money and which account is receiving the money. And that account, and that transaction, uh, uh, I can give, or an example I, I can give is this: um, made sales of uh, five thousand naira. Made sales of five thousand naira. Okay, so sales is made of five thousand naira. So there are two accounts involved: sales account and cash account. So if I make sales, it shows that the goods in my shop is, is reducing, and the money in my hand is increasing. So, sales account is giving out goods. Money, uh, the cash account is receiving money. So, made sales of 2,000 Naira. So, these are the two accounts that my transaction will enter. One is the cash account, which is collecting money. And the other account is the sales account, which is giving out goods. So, so that's why I say number one, the first thing you should do is uh, to find out which account is involved then which account is given in value then number five there which account is receiving in value once you are able to identify question three four and five which two accounts are involved which account is given in monetary value uh, which account is receiving in monetary value once you can identify those two accounts then go ahead and debit 
the account which is receiving money or money what and credit the account which is giving money or money so it's as easy as as that but with constant practice you will get this this there's nothing uh, difficult about it i know uh, when it comes to this topic students uh, normally find it um, challenging because uh, they begin to think but with consistent uh, practice it's very simple take note of that for every transaction there are two accounts involved there are two accounts involved uh, let me give another example um made uh, payment for electricity so, so for example i paid my nepa bill my business is owning some nepa bill and i paid my nepa bill of five thousand naira. okay so if i'm paying my nepa bill i took cash out of my hand to pay that nepa bill okay so there are two accounts involved the cash account and the electricity account so one account is giving out money and that account is receiving the money okay so paid nepa bill or pay my electricity bill of five thousand naira. cash is giving out money and it's giving the money to the um uh, electrical uh, account or the electricity account so why the electricity account is receiving the money my cash account is giving out the money okay so once you can identify the two accounts involved you just uh, debit the account that is receiving and credit the account that is giving out the money i i will look at this later on this is an accounting equation where asset equal to capital plus liability but, but i don't want to i just want you to know it but i will not discuss much on it okay but later on i'll come back to this later on so let's look at some um, illustration on the principle of a double entry let's look at some illustration there so the first one we'll be looking at is january one January 1, uh, which talks about uh, Mr. Ojo started business with 40,000 naira in cash. Mr. Ojo started business with 40,000 naira in cash. So in this uh, transaction, we have two accounts. We have cash account and we have capital account because it said Mr. Ojo started business. So money used to start business is called capital. So 40,000 naira was introduced into the business. So money was taken from the cash account and used it to buy goods uh, uh, that will be sold or machines that will be sold in the business. Okay. So one account is giving out money. Uh, the other account is, uh, is uh, receiving money. So take note. Uh, it said increase in capital. Of course, your capital account is increasing. Increase in asset, your cash account, asset is increasing. So how do you take this action? Which account is giving and which account is uh, receiving? So your capital account is giving. Your capital account is giving because capital is giving out money. Uh, and then the cash account is receiving the money. The cash account is receiving the money. So these are the two accounts involved. So capital account is giving out 40,000 naira as cash to buy whatever you want to use to start the business so uh cash account is receiving the money so in your cash book now if you are if you are to post this it will be posted on the debit side of your cash book it will be posted on the debit side of your cash book because money is entering into the business the business is receiving money okay from capital account to start a business okay so now let's look at another transaction Let's look at another transaction. As I've said earlier, with consistent uh, practice, uh, you will get it. With consistent practice, you will get it. So just think of any transaction that uh, can be involved in a business. Once you have thought of such a transaction, look at there, there's always two accounts involved. So try to identify the two accounts involved. Now, once you've done that, take note which account is giving out money and which account is receiving money. Once you can identify the account that is giving out money and the account that is receiving uh, the money, debit the account that is receiving the money and credit the account that is giving out money. As I've said, it's as simple as that. So let's look at uh, January 2. Paid uh, 450 Naira cash for rent. 
paid 450 Naira cash for rent. So take note of this. One account is giving out money. The other account is receiving money. So which two accounts are involved here? You agree with me that we have the cash account and the rent account. Now the rent account is receiving money. So it is increasing. Because the rent is a form of expenditure. So expenditure is increasing. So the rent account is receiving the money. And because you are paying cash from your hand, from the business, to pay for rent, your cash account is reducing. Your cash account is reducing. That is the effect on your books of account. So how do you implement this? As I've said, one account is receiving. Which account is re receiving? Uh, the rent account is receiving. So you debit the rent account. In your cash book, you credit that transaction. So your cash account, you credit the, the uh, giver because it's giving out the money. In your rent account, which you are going to open, you debit the uh, receiver because it is receiving the money. So those are the two accounts involved. So I'll be doing a video on this where it will just be pure calculation on this so that you have a good understanding of it. So, but at least with this uh, examples i think you are getting a feeling of, of what i'm talking about let's look at under transaction bought motoban 60 naira paid by check bought motoban 60 naira paying by check so also we have two accounts involved we have the motoban account and we have the check account when you talk about check we're talking about bank so we have the bank account those are the two accounts so the first thing you need to ask yourself is this which account is giving out money and which account is receiving money so in this case uh you bought motor van so th there is increase in assets there's in increase in number of uh, of motor van you have so motor van is increasing and then the money in your hand in the bank is reducing the money in your bank is reducing so your bank account is reducing so once you've done that, so you just have to implement the action. So because motor van is uh, receiving, you debit this transaction in the motor van account. And because your bank account is uh, giving out money, this transaction will be credited on the credit side of your bank account. So your bank account, you credit this transaction and your, uh, your motor van will be debited in the motor van account. So take note of that. Uh, let's look at one more example. One more example. Purchase goods, 100 Naira on credit from Okolo. Purchase goods, 100 Naira on credit from Okolo. So we have two accounts here. We have purchase account and we have the Okolo account. So Okolo now is buying goods on credit. So we see a liability because it's not paying. It's a liability. So meaning uh, the number of people that are owing us is increasing because Okolo is not. Uh, uh, sorry, in this case, purchase goods. So we're buying from Okolo. Sorry, we're buying from Okolo. Okay, so Okolo is our creditor. Okolo is our creditor. So our liability as a business is increasing because we purchase that goods from Okolo without paying uh, the money to Okolo. So as a business, our liability is growing. So we are owing Okolo 100 Naira. Uh, in, the, in the other way as well, our account is, our purchase account is increasing because more goods is coming into the business. Okay, so purchase account is increasing. Uh, but um, Okolo uh, uh, account, uh, because it's, uh, it's uh, uh, a liability now, is also increasing. So purchase account is receiving while Okolo account is giving. Okolo gave us that money okay 100 naira the goods worth of 100 naira okolo gave us so okolo is the giver in this case and then the purchase account is the receiver it is okay, purchase account is the receiver so purchase account is receiving goods worth 100 naira while okolo account is giving us goods worth 100 naira so okolo account is the giver while purchase account is the receiver so as i've said um just take note of uh, the transaction for every transaction there are two accounts involved take note of the two accounts involved once you've done that find out which account is receiving 
and which account is given. Once you find that out, then debit the account that is receiving and credit the account that is given. Okay? So, uh, I've uh, given some assignment here, which I would like you to try out yourself. Try this assignment out. Does about a four to five transaction. Action. I want you to try that, that out, and then I will be expecting your response. Please try it out. It will go a long way to uh, help you out uh, to see if you truly get uh, the message. So, for example, now match to add a paid salary of his staff, five hundred dollar by 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 uh, cash. You should know. We have two accounts there. One is salary account and the other one is cash account. So you know which account is receiving and which account is is given. So to it at all. There's nothing to it at all. It's one of uh, the interesting topic in accounting. It's talking about um, double entry. It's uh, the golden rule in accounting. Golden rule in accounting. And the golden rule says that uh, for every transaction, there are two uh, records to be made, two entries, the debit, the, uh, the debit entry, and there uh, must be also be a corresponding credit entry for every transaction made. So try this assignment, and in our next class, uh, we'll be doing some um, correction to this, and we'll be seeing more transaction. Thank you.